we got a super special episode for you guys today. Um, we are doing our first request, and uh, I'm excited for that because it shows that people are actually watching the show, enjoying the show. I mean, we do get the feed, the positive feedback from the usual um, listeners and watchers. Um, but man, uh, uh, what a what a movie to I guess discuss for our first request. I am Eric from Hey Internet Eric here, and as always, every week I am joined by the Vicky Vale to my Alexander Knox, my buddy friends. Today we're going to talk about the obscure, at least in my opinion, Don't Go Into the Woods. Now, I, I told Frenzy I did this a little differently because I want to be a little quote unquote professional, um, especially if I haven't seen the movie. I had never even fucking heard of this movie until she mentioned it. So I have a little bit of notes here of background information. And then I told Frenzy, other than that, I just wrote down some notes uh, while I was watching the movie of memorable mo moments from the film, whether good or bad. And then we'll just try to shoot it out of our ass like we normally do. So um, before I get to any of the info, uh, you've seen this before, right, Frenzy? Other than you said you've seen this before, we actually were going to discuss this. One time. One time. Okay. Well, the story is that one of my uh, acquaintances online always talked about in his videos that it was his favorite movie, his favorite horror movie. And I knew that was wrong just from just because I never heard of it. But also, then when I finally watched it uh, a couple years ago when it came out on Blu-ray, I was mm -hmm. like, really? like he doesn't defend it or anything. He just says it's his um, guilty pleasure okay. movie. But I remember, you know, we'll talk about it a little bit. But what mm -hmm. the the opening gambit you just said about worst one of the worst the worst horror movie ever made. That's ridiculous. No, I wouldn't and, say that. And I mean, we're gonna we're gonna get into this, and it's it maybe it's close, but not the worst. No, like I watched ten of the worst this fucking week for Halloween. Like, <laughs> like give me a break. All right. Um. That being said, let uh, I got a little bit of a background info. Don't go into the woods. Excuse me. Don't go into the woods. Came out in 1981. It's also known as Don't Go Into the Woods. Dot dot dot. Alone. Uh, I got it's directed by James Bryan. Never heard of him. A budget of twenty thousand dollars. That shows. Holy shit. <laughs> um, Rotten Tomato score not available. <laughs> um, but I did find on IMDb it has a score. Now I don't how, know how they do. I know Rotten Tomatoes is basically they just take fan reviews and they average it out, and critic reviews and average it out. I don't know if that's the same on IMDb. But IMDb has a score of 3.8 out of 10. And um, uh, my buddy at work, he he follows IMDb scores. And he says if it's 5.5 or if it's like a 5 or higher, it's decent. So that says that. Yeah. Um, so, oh, I wanted to say uh, when Victoria found out we were doing this one, because I messaged her and I told her we were going to give her a shout out. Um, she and I quote, she uh, responded by saying, I wouldn't blame you if you outright hate it because the movie is just awful. <laughs> um, other uh, background info, just a couple things. The fake blood because of the budget was so cheap is a mixture of red food coloring and barbecue sauce. Wow. And um, the only other thing is um, and when I say I do research, I just go Wikipedia and IMDb trivia. So um, <laughs> apparently it was a video nasty which I don't really know what those are. You know what a video nasty is? Yeah, it was the British um, equivalent of the, in the 1980s, we had the, the congressional hearings over the uh, rap music and metal. Mm -hmm. They were saying mm -hmm. metal was causing kids to murder and uh, all these famous people went and testified, Frank Zappa and um, uh, how about how stupid that was. It was uh, mm -hmm. different. Tipper Gore, Al Gore's wife. Yeah, and, I remember because I've seen video footage of like D. Snyder talking shit to her in court. Exactly. And in the UK, they had the same sort of thing. But people don't know this about British, but you know they we um, idolize British society. Like I mean, some of us do. Mm -hmm. do you think they're all like um, hoity-toity intellectual, or whatever. They're crazy. Mm -hmm. 
comes to censorship. Oh, yeah. I mean, seriously, ban, they've banned, like, if you just look into it, especially during the, the nasty stuff, they just outright banned movies for 30 years. Like, when A Clockwork Orange came out, that movie didn't even play in, in it never played in the, um, the UK until, like, the 2000s. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So they're really weird about censorship. When it comes yeah, to... Mental- Go ahead. They have nudity on TV and stuff. Mm-hmm. They don't censor that, but if it's violence, they think that that uh, causes people to be violent, which I think is ridiculous. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because um, on my YouTube channel, I think it was like maybe a month or so ago, um, I always talk about how I do like a slashback Saturday challenge, and my, what it is is my buddy has a specific uh, theme, and then you find a slasher movie that fits into it and make a video. And his his for that week was uh, kid slashers. So I found the movie Mikey, you know, the one where it's the the psychotic kid played by um, uh, Brian Bonsell from like Family Ties. He was the the young brother. And he's yeah. going from like foster family to foster family, killing everybody and stuff. And um, I guess that was banned in UK. And I think this came out in like '92, and I think it's still banned in UK because it's supposedly quote unquote inspired two kids to go murder like a two-year-old or something like that and then the same thing happened with child's play three i think that's still banned in the uk because of uh young kids were inspired or whatever to kill another kid because they watched child's play three so oh my god speaking of child's play three i have to bring this up because i blew my mind i just watched uh for halloween blair witch 2 the book of shadows Mm -hmm. which that came out 20 years ago so i was a teenager Mm -hmm. you know everyone loved the Blair Witch I just remember you know at that point in my life was like bad sequels like offended me you know what I mean like Mm -hmm. when it's so different from the original so I watched it now as an adult and you know that's a whole separate episode Mm -hmm. it's ridiculous movie but I looked into the director the only movie the director's ever made up until that point is Child's Play 3 are you shitting me he only does music videos and documentaries. He did those really amazing um, Paradise Lost mm-hmm. documentaries about the three guys who uh, they said they blamed for killing the kid, remember? Mm-hmm. And they're like just white trash metalheads that didn't kill anyone. Mm-hmm. He did those, and he made Child's Play 3. <laughs> it. And, and uh, he kept, after Child's Play 3, he kept making more and more documentaries. He only made one new, one actual real movie. It's that... Um, Ted Bundy movie on Netflix. With, uh, Who was Zac Efron? With Zac Efron. Wow. That's his, that's his third movie. Child's Play 3, Blair Witch 2, and then that. <laughs> but I just thought I'd bring that up. No, that's, a, that's an interesting tangent. And uh, what I was saying is uh, it was unavailable in the UK for many years because it was uh, on the list of video nasties and finally passed fully uncut in 2007, remember this was made in 1981. Wait, you're talking about this movie? Yeah. What year was it released? Uh, Don't Go Into the Woods was released in night was released in 1981 and finally passed fully uncut in 2007. That's what I mean. So they were no one saw it till 2007 in the UK. <laughs> if anyone saw it after it was being passed to begin with. Well, that train, that 80s slasher train, sailed a long time ago. So I'm yep. sure they can love it. Can you um, imagine being younger and not having any perspective on 80s slasher movies? Mm-hmm. And saying that now, of course it's the worst movie ever made, right? Yeah. God. Or maybe the most bizarre thing. I don't know. Man, the UK is fucked. Yeah. I watched this on YouTube for free, and it was great because <laughs> the great part about the YouTube was... um. It was uploaded from a VHS tape, so that did kind of help with, like, you know, the shitty quality of it, because it did remind me of watching all these shitty movies on VHS, and it was great because it opened up with the uh, the Vestron Video logo, and if you know Vestron Video, then yeah. it's nothing but, but, but garbage. So I knew I was in trouble, and um, I knew I was really in trouble when I saw just the way it was shot, and... The, I think it's called what is it ADR? You know when um, yeah, people are talking outside and then they have to go back in the booth and redub the uh the audio. It should be called ODR for this movie. 
Yeah, that I noticed that I wrote that down. My 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 little note was the ADR is fucked. LOL. Because and I didn't know this. This was actually another thing I found on IMDb. They filmed the whole movie and then once everything was done filming, they ADR the entire film. Yeah, you probably couldn't tell because the VHS copy on Blu-ray. Which uh-huh. don't have seen it. It's really obvious. It's all right. Oh my God! What is that? I don't know, baby. It's probably just a bear or something. Something's out there. Uh, don't, don't, don't worry about it. Let me, let me take care of it. Let me take care of it. I'll take care of it. Eh? You, you can tell in the audio big time that it doesn't fit. I mean, it kind of syncs up a little bit, but again, like you said, it was a shitty VHS upload, so it was hard yeah. to tell. Um, oh, the basic plot of this movie is it's, um, group of uh, four friends go into the woods camping and they're basically stalked by uh, Grizzly Adams who uh, murders them in creative ways. That's basically it. There's no other way to say it. I think this dude looks like, and this is what I thought since I first, the first time I saw this guy, which I think has a good reveal. I love the reveal in this movie for this guy. Mm-hmm. To me, he just gutted a, an Ewok mm-hmm. and put like he's inside of skin that's what i think when i see this guy well i'll I'll say this um i personally think i mean i just said grizzly adams because he's like a big bearded mountain man my wife came and sat down with me halfway through and um she saw the big reveal and um i'm gonna love like how um you're gonna edit some of this because my wife sat down to watch this and she thought it was uh wwe wrestler mick foley running around (laughs) in the woods yeah and uh, I thought that, but I was really getting more of um, Andre the Giant as Bigfoot in the Six Million Dollar Man. Have you ever seen that makeup? That's no. definitely what it looked like to me. Oh, Andre the Giant as the Six Million Dollar Man? No, he no. It was an episode of the Six Million Dollar Man, I believe. Oh. The Six Million Dollar Man encountered Bigfoot, and it was played by Andre the Giant in just <laughs> this brown paint and a wig and. Holy shit. That's the that's the basic plot. Um, I knew we were in we were in trouble because one of the scenes I saw I, I wrote down was there's a couple in the woods and it's more bad ADR and they're killed by mostly off screen strangulation and then the, the the husband is thrown off the cliff and he lands right next to a waterfall where a couple is in the waterfall splashing each other and they don't see the body like five feet next to them. And then um, the, the, the side plot is we are following, we were following a sheriff who was obviously way too fat to be the sheriff. And they're trying to no all these missing, uh, all these missing persons reports of different hikers that go missing in the woods. Another missing person report. Same area too. It's the friggin' call of the wild. Some of those people shouldn't be out there at all. And my favorite scene was <laughs> was when he he happens upon the uh, the the just married couple that's in the trailer, or they're they're not in a trailer. It's like a big giant uh a VW Bug. Yeah, that's it. And with like just married, like spray painted on the side of it. They're getting ready to to co- to consummate the marriage. At first, I was, I was kind of turned off because I wrote down that the dude was looked like David Carradine. And uh, That's the woman, awesome. like, yeah, and the That's... woman looked like Margaret Hamilton, you know, the Wicked Witch of the West. Yeah, they, they do the scene like they, you know, they're gonna have sex, and then of course they think they hear somebody outside. So um, David Carradine goes out and he walks like fifty feet away because you know any peeping Tom is gonna be fifty feet away looking into a VW Bug. I do, I did like it that uh, he called the guy a pencil neck geek because that's one of my favorite lines from like. You know, classy Freddie Blassie would call people that. I don't remember how they were killed. I just wrote down that there was nice gore. And then suddenly the van go or the VW bug goes down a hill and explodes, but you don't see anyone pushing it off the hill. He stabs the 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 uh, the husband and then he's shaking the VW bug while she's okay. inside and he just pushes it. You don't see any of that. But the great thing about that is, and this is this is one of the many things about this movie that I mean. $20,000, it seems like, 
I know I'm, you're going to think I'm crazy for this, but that sounds low to me. Considering, like, if you really think about, there's like, there's like locations, and there's mm-hmm. a few sets, like there are locations that they're using as sets. There's a shit ton of people in this movie, like mm-hmm. extras, especially later and stuff. Uh, and it, it's shot on real film, and that doesn't matter. But but that's one of my favorite scenes, is because I think that all they did was they hauled up a VW bug that doesn't work. It's like not they put some lights uh-huh. in when they're having sex. But that's how the you know they they just got it in the scrapyard. They literally spray painted "just married" on it. Mm-hmm. When they throw it over the side, the the ADR of her screaming as it's tumbling is amazing. <laughs> and then it when it lands on its side. Um, it, it lights on fire, and then the ADR comes back in, and she's burning alive, but it's like, they obviously didn't even give her direction to tell her, you're burning. I mean, that's laugh-out-loud funny, right? Mm. And I was thinking, you know, uh, this really reminded me of, like, uh, like uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space, not plot-wise, but just the way, like, Ed Wood would film that. There'd yeah. be no retakes yeah. or anything like that, as long as it was recorded. It... it, it it made the cut. I wish that they had like a sound stage, though, like Plan Nine. That's the reason they. I mean, everything has to be in the woods. I mean, it's like literally, the dude just went on a hike, and mm-hmm. got, he he thought, man, this you know we can make a horror movie while we're hiking because it's free. Everything's free, like the yeah. location and uh. Yeah, I think I think I read they filmed somewhere in Utah because it was just super cheap, which makes sense because you know that's where Ruben and Ed was filmed, and you you saw how cheap that movie was. Oh, Jesus. But still, like, the Ruben and Ed still has the polish of, like, I mean, even though I've only seen it on v, it's only on VHS, like, quality. You can mm-hmm. still tell that's kind of like a a, a real movie. This yeah. is like, completely guerrilla filmmaking. Yeah. And, you know, I was going to say this, too, about some of the, like, you, you just have to guess, like, the ca- the main cabin that the bad guy lives in, mm-hmm. maybe one of their friends owned that. Yeah, because they go in and they use that a lot. And then, but what really surprised me was the actual hospital. Mm-hmm. Like, how did they get that? How did, I mean, they shot in an actual hospital with actual doctors and stuff in, in in the background. Yeah, they must have. It seemed like. I thought. I think maybe they just walked in with their actors. And the, <laughs> the doctors didn't. That they were. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Probably shot that in five minutes. Yeah. Uh, Again, we'll go back, we'll go back to, uh, to to Ed Wood, like the Tim Burton movie, you know, the scene where they're filming on the, on the street, and the cops show up, they're like, okay, let's go, you know, type of thing. Yeah. Well, so many great movies are shot just like that. Mm-hmm. They don't get permits, they just do it. Um, but this one, and this will feed into my bigger picture thing, because it's like, it's it's so easy to just shit on movies like this, but there's some specific mm-hmm. things about the movie that are quaint. And then mm-hmm. I actually kind of that are entertaining, like the especially the ADR is so bad mm-hmm. that it, it becomes bigger than the movie. Like to me, uh, there's a few good shots and things like that we'll talk about later. But the ADR, you I can just listen to that as if it was like I mean, it's entertaining on its own. Yeah. No, there's no reshoots or anything. The line delivery by these people is one time, like you said. Mm hmm. It's rolled with it. And I think it's fucking hilarious because uh, just some of these see, like conversations that these people never had. And if you listen really close, like all of the sound effects and stuff, like mm-hmm. all that's done in post, and it's kind of cute. I respect this dude who made this movie because he's trying his ass off. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like, and it's not very uncommon. Um, Stanley Kubrick's first movie was uh, a, this, this boxing movie called Killer's Kiss. And he did the whole movie with ADR because it's cheaper. You don't need sound people. You just right. shoot your movie and then go back and do it. And if it's done well, like that movie, you can't mm-hmm. tell. This one, unfortunately, <laughs> it's, it's never real. It's never real for a second. Right. Like when you're walking through grass, I'm like, that's not what that's not what grass sounds like. <laughs> like, what the fuck did you use plastic? It's funny. Like now that you mention it, the real star of this movie is the bad ADR. Exactly. Oh, and yeah. it's the bad ADR and the mountains. 
Mm-hmm. Like there are some uh, me, like I don't know if you'll agree with me because, but I'm just saying I saw I'm watching the Blu-ray. There's mm-hmm. some mental, beautifully framed shots in this movie that he just like got really lucky. Like set the camera down and like the actor walks into it as this mm-hmm. is for the mountain. Um, I, I really love the 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 scenery and stuff, but uh, it, it doesn't um, it doesn't hold this movie together. Cold scenery and bad bad sound. Just mm-hmm. uh, I am very I am struggling really fucking hard to talk about this movie. But <laughs> real quick before we move on, I just wanted to say one more thing mm-hmm. before we get to the sheriff. Who's the best? The sheriff is my favorite. And I have so much to talk about that fat ass loser. <laughs> But you know what they you said the subtitle like the the alternate title whatever this movie is don't go in the woods alone don't go in mm. the woods alone who goes in the woods alone <laughs> no one all these people like are there any, are there any people in this movie that are alone except wait the fisherman mm. well yeah the bird watcher in the very beginning we do see one person one woman getting chased by herself in the very beginning before he kills the bird watcher. But we don't know if they're together. We don't know if they're a couple or not. And then the next scene I was going to talk about is technically there's the woman who's painting and uh, she's killed while she's painting, but she's got her baby with her in like a Johnny jump up thing. Yeah. And um, it was kind of, it was kind of one of those, wow, this is kind of uncomfortable watching, not because um, of the scene. I mean, it's a really cheaply, done kill scene i mean there's some decent blood effects you know i do like how you see some blood i think splatter on her painting that she's doing but what made me a little bit of uneasy and I don't, that might not be the right word because some of the movies i've seen but the baby is in the johnny jump up watching this whole thing with an and, mm-hmm. and then it cuts to i think the woods again and then suddenly we see the johnny jump up is gone mm-hmm. so i think that that's one of those movies you don't see anymore because what really gets me is like when a kid is murdered and even though this didn't happen on screen, you know, you know, the fact that the baby was killed, it was just one of those, wow, I didn't think that this stupid movie would actually go there. So I, I kind of gave it props for that. Doesn't the baby show up at the end? If it did, I didn't fucking notice it <laughs> by the end of this movie. I don't think it did. Well, the only reason I thought it did show up was because I thought they spoiled this whole... Yeah, the last shot is the baby playing with the axe, isn't it? I don't remember it. I don't remember that, no. Okay, here's why I think that. Because I have a mental note here. Mm-hmm. Um, I said they ruined... I thought that it cuts to the baby with the axe playing in the dirt at the end. As if they're going to find it. Like the search squad, like it's it's everything's okay, but the kid has an axe and... Maybe they're alluding to he'll grow up and be a murderer because he saw his mom get murdered, whatever. I think that's all stupid. Maybe he's not in the end and I'm just hallucinating this. Because it was fucking, it was painful to watch this a second time. Well, but, I may, you know, this was my first time watching it. And maybe by that time I had completely checked out. And I was, I just didn't even pay attention. The last thing I remember is, you know, we'll get to it. The, you know, Grizzly Adams is killed and then. Uh, the police find the survivors, and then last thing I remember is the two survivors waving goodbye. I think to the fat sheriff. Well, the fat sheriff's assistant says they they make a nice couple. Yeah, he's waving, and the sheriff's just looking at him like you dumb fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and the survivors are like, yeah, that's all I remember is them waving goodbye, and then it cuts to the the end. I the swear, it cuts to the baby playing, but. None of that matters. I'm saying they threw away a great ending. I think it would have been even cooler. I like child death in horror movies, obviously. Big fan. But it would have been better if the last shot was the kids playing with the axe in the woods and that mm-hmm. stupid, ridiculous theme song comes back and yeah. it pans up. Here's the mind-blowing part. This mm-hmm. would been, it pans up to his wife, who, mm-hmm. who she's like fat and hairy like him in the same mm-hmm. kind of Ewok outfit, and she comes over and she picks up the baby like she's going to raise the baby. So mm-hmm. there were two. There's like, there's like a family of these fucking things in the woods. I mm-hmm. thought that was amazing. That would have been fun. All you have to do is give $20 to some, you know, homeless bum woman. <laughs> it's like, I, mean, I don't know how he <laughs> people in this movie. Yeah. 
I don't know if they were all just friends or if they just worked for free. But um, and then uh, the next thing I have was um, we we do meet the character, the the killer. We finally see him, but it's like thirty six minutes in, and um, <laughs> um, what really what I really hate is you know we're we're picking on it for like the bad ADR. What really got on me was the the music every time um he's stalking the person. Yeah. Yeah, that was just that was uh brutal to my ears. Um I didn't mind like the movie starts out with some really retarded like synth music, but it was 1981 so I was kind of getting into it because you know Friday the 13th part 3 like had that disco song that I kind of enjoy, you know, the disco music. But yeah. um this whole stalking music was is just worse than anything I think, you know, the acting, the bad gore, the bad ADR. They could have just gotten rid of this whole stalking music i wouldn't have cared if it was just like you know nature noises or whatever you know while he's stalking these people i think there was i think there was potential for it but this movie's so cheap like the idea is kind of ridiculous there's like three themes to this movie there's mm -hmm. the stalker theme which is like it's the sound of like a dump truck trying to crank on it's like rank, rank. yeah yeah, yeah. And it's horrible. And then the second theme is the beautiful, beautiful, is the, <laughs> the fake movie music strings. Mm -hmm. like, bad. And then the third one is like this carnival music that plays mm -hmm. when something's supposed to be funny. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So uh, there's the the horrible engine starting up stalker music. And the, uh, oh, and the, the main theme has like a, a guitar rendition too. Mm -hmm. You notice know that? Yeah. Like sometimes it has like a beautiful acoustic guitar. It sounds okay. But then the third one has the circus music. When they whenever it's a, a punchline to a joke or something really horrible's happening, it plays the circus music and you can tell this was not done like Friday the thirteenth, that shit sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. All that synth stuff. Even like I've seen really bad eighties slasher movies that have incredible synth stuff because they had enough synths to go to a fucking studio, pay a couple hundred dollars. This is a guy in his bathroom on a Casio. Yeah. Because it sounds like shit. <laughs> um, I wrote down um, a couple is killed in the in the woods. One guy is stabbed to death in a sleeping bag, while the other is hung from a tree. Like, she's in the sleeping bag, and she's tied yeah. up, she's hung from a tree. Like, I really enjoyed, like, that kill, like, in the Friday the 13th remake, but there was no payoff, I don't think, here for this one. I just thought, like, it's kind of like, you know, um, that joke, like, you know, hide your food in the tree so the bears don't get it. That's what I was just picturing her hanging from the tree in that sleeping bag. And I stupid. I think he stabbed her to death. I don't remember. Yeah, he, he stabs her. He's got the, I, that's one of the things, that's horrible. But I do like his weapon of choice. It's like this weird wizard staff, like a, with like a dagger. Well, but there's well was it a dagger? Because honestly, I thought it was just a long stick. Like I didn't see a point to it or anything. I thought it was a stone that he that he shaped into a you know like he like a sharp stone. It could have been. To me, it looked just like a big like like you said it perfectly like a like Gandalf stick. You know, oh, walking oh, stick. Stick. The whole it is a stick, and he has uh -huh. it's double sided. Like he has this the sharp stone thing on one side, and he also has just like the stick thing. Um, but there's two. Uh, there's a part we'll talk about. I, I love that he, like, uh, it has bells on it, too. Like, what kind of fucking hillbilly stalker puts bells on his weapon so you can hear him coming? Yeah. Like, I mean, that's fucking hilarious. The fucking mm -hmm. bells on his weapon. But, you know, there's another sleeping bag scene with the girlfriend. And he, she, the, the boy, that's what I, the, the boyfriend ties her up in the sleeping bag and hangs that's her. That's right. He was playing, like, some mean old joke on her. And... I like that. Uh, I, I kind of liked it uh, that one the, that time around because she tears a hole in the sleeping bag and she's mm. she's got a great point of view. She's thirty feet in the air, so she sees the fat ass monster guy, a hillbilly, mm. coming with the and uh, you know, or her boyfriend can't see because he's not up in the air. Yeah, and she's trying to scream to him, but it's too late. I I, I know everything in this movie is horrible, but I like the idea. That's kind of scary to me that you're in a sleeping bag, completely mm. vulnerable. The only person that can help you is this fruitcake boyfriend of yours, and yeah. he's not—he's not listening to you. There's this guy coming. It could have been done so much better, but I do like that setup. 
Okay. Well, you know, I think by this movie, I'd already checked out. So it's a good thing you <laughs> you're here to help me with this this discussion. You are. And, I'm, and uh, I I got this written down. I already uh, explained how um my wife Rachel she thought he looked kind of like Mick Foley, and yeah. um she when she came and sat down she came and sat down at the part where one of the girls is running and you just hear Grizzly Adams screaming in the woods and all you hear is him just going rah rah you know. Um, and she swore, like, she didn't even know what I was watching. She just knew I was watching a bad, like, killer in the woods movies from the 80s. And she's like, is Gary Busey in this movie? Because we're just picturing, can you picture, like, yeah, like Gary Busey from uh, Black Sheep, you know, yeah. living in a, living in the camper in the woods, stalking people. It's like they remade that part in Black Sheep, you know, except this little girl, this girl that he was talking was the David Spade character. You know what I mean? I don't think they, was Gary Busey cr that crazy yet? In 81, no. He hadn't had his accident yet. Well, it would have been better. I mean, if they're going to remake this, which they should, mm -hmm. uh, I want it to be shot by, shot for shot exactly the same. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but if they really did redo it, get Gary Busey. Yeah. He'd just play himself. Yeah, Gary B just follow Gary Busey around for 24 hours with a camera. <laughs> you know, and you know what's weird about Gary Busey? I'm glad you guys brought that up. He's got like this cult following now. He was always mm -hmm. just an eccentric actor who they put mm -hmm. in great roles. I love all the movies he's in. Mm -hmm. But cult factor now, they don't use him. Yeah. Like, why don't they exploit him? Like, they do everything else. Don't get it. Why is then, he not in like 30 trauma movies? Is my point. Well, that's because Nicolas Cage is taking over for him now. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, and he's probably cheaper. Okay. Yeah, they can get more mileage out of Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage owes money to the IRS, so he'll do anything. Gary Busey probably still charges a fee. That's true. Oh, and he's like a super Christian now, isn't he? Yeah. He got that motorcycle accident. Mm -hmm. But he did do the... Gin but you know what? That doesn't you know mean anything, really, because he has done the ginger dead man since his accident, so the super Christian stuff doesn't mean anything, I don't think. Really? Yeah. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, he was in the first. He was he was the ginger dead man in the first one. Well, what kind of Christian <laughs> is he to do that? Because the second one called the Passion of the Crust. Maybe that's why he's not in the sequel. Ah, he was against it. Yeah. Maybe he thought maybe he thought the first movie it was a gingerbread cookie. Maybe he thought it was a Christmas movie. I don't fucking know. Yeah, that's insane. As you can tell, we didn't really care for uh, Don't Go in the Woods Alone if we're talking about the ginger dead man, Gary Buse. Uh. Your shirt. You have a different shirt like almost every time. That one's amazing. The spy versus yeah. spy with a... Yeah, it's spy versus spy, but it's Jason versus Freddy. How many fucking shirts do you have like that? Way too many. It's awesome. A lot. And they're all black. <laughs> well, when you're fat, you need black to hide it, everything. That's what I have. All my shirts are black, too. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, next thing I got... Dark. The next scene I have is uh the scene where one of the uh heroes i guess accidentally impales his friend you went with a with a with a giant stick when he's trying to aim it at grizzly adams and then he um he does this really bad oh i'm sorry i'm sorry line and then grizzly adams attacks them literally by throwing twigs at him and it's not just like his one spear he's literally throwing like three four five different little twigs at him Makes sense. He loves twigs, man. He, he has one of the coolest things about his outfit is his chest plate. Mm -hmm. He has like this twig umpire vest. I fucking love it. That scene, you got, you have to be honest though. When he accidentally he turns the corner because he hears the guy coming and he stabs him in the gut, his friend, mm -hmm. that's yeah. pretty sad. I kind of, yeah. the worst part is the fat ass. Hillbilly rubs it in because he he saw the whole thing go down and he's in the background like laughing like yeah yeah <laughs> like he scored a fucking touch. <laughs> then I, I wrote down this is this is the one scene I will praise okay when uh, the girl with the short hair makes it into his shack 
and he slices her up with a machete. Mm. That's where the majority, I think, of the twenty thousand bucks went because those cuts are, you know, on the skin. Those effects, I think, for twenty thousand dollar budget, are pretty damn good. I did not expect them to look that good after already watching fifty minutes of what I've seen. You know what I mean? Oh no, I know exactly where the twenty thousand dollar budget went. The effects, you can just get like a gung ho effects guy to do the shit really cheap or for free just so his name's in the credits mm-hmm. the the money for this movie went into like, the big chunk of it was helicopter yeah because this I movie think, you know you're probably awful. right they they they're smart about it a little bit though because there's a lot of helicopter shots in this movie and then we get to the helicopter which is really funny because that i it's so funny that that cop that fat cop is not in that well, why do I keep saying helicopter? I mean airplane. Excuse me. Yeah, whatever. Airplane shots. When we get to the airplane in the story, he's not in that airplane. They don't, if you look really closely, because I know I'm like super fat and I have an eating disorder. I've been fat my whole life, so I look for fat stuff, right? Mm-hmm. right? And what's unrealistic or not, that fat ass cop does not get in that airplane. They cut when he opens the door. And then they cut when he's inside, but it's obviously they're on the ground and they're they're shaking the camera to make it look like it's <laughs> in order for that guy to get in that thing, they had to like rip the seat out. And they don't mm-hmm. I just think it's really funny. That dude was never in the plane. Plus he he the, the airplane can't hold that much weight. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um the next thing I have is um I just have it we got something to talk about. The next note, I just put wheelchair guy oh with a question God. mark. For some reason, for <laughs> and um, Rachel, she's actually she's sitting next to me now just listening. Um, we were both questioning, why the hell is there a, just a random person in a wheelchair trying to roll uphill in the back yeah. of the wood? He's by himself. He attributes nothing to this movie. He doesn't meet the victims or anything. And then, I mean, he does have a cool death. Like he, like, uh, Grizzly Adams sneaks up on him and decapitates him with the machete. But the problem is, it's at nighttime and it's all dark, so you can't even. Well, you have the Blu-ray quality. Remember, I'm watching shitty VHS. You can't even see his head roll down the hill in the dark. Okay, and then there is one thing, one one more info thing that I wanted to at least save till the wheelchair guy thing is. I found this actually quite funny. Is I guess there was a premiere of this movie, which is surprisingly. I don't know if it was like some shitty you know theater or whatever, but. The guy who played, who was the wheelchair guy, isn't crippled, I guess. And um, when he came on, he was laughing hysterically. And there was this old lady who was sitting in front of him. And I guess she turned around and looked and, and kind of yelled at him. She says, How disrespectful are you? How would you feel if you were the one in that wheelchair? And then that just made him laugh even more, especially when his head got cut off. Wow. What a dumb asshole. <laughs> I bet he never told her either. Yeah. Oh, I hope not. That she would have been even perfect. Thing she corrected this guy. Yeah. That she's all high and mighty. That's I fucking sick. Well, and another thing, not just wheelchair guy, what about the skater girl? Oh, hi. Ah. Hi there. Be careful. Okay. Thanks a lot. going to be one of those summers. Ah! Oh, yeah, she just skates by for no reason. You never see her again. She's not even killed in the woods, is she? Yeah, I never connected any of these dots. Like, there are a bunch of people that are alone in the woods. Yeah. And they're all real. And she's the only one that goes alone in the woods and survives that we know of. It's the roller skates, man. She was able to get away with the roller skate. You well, couldn't catch budget for her death. It was gonna be really cool though. Okay, I have I have two more notes or two hashtags or whatever, and then I'm done. Um he was the Grizzly Adams was killed by two people. One of the girl one was the uh, the female survivor, and she was using the machete, but as she was stabbing him, the knife never went in the body. And you see that plain as day. And the other one 
the other one killing him is the male survivor, and he's just stabbing him. I don't know if it's with the Gandalf stick, as we're calling it. But stick. that okay, that wasn't you know penetrating his body at all. Nope. And then so that was that was kind of lame. And then we talked we already talked about the scene where we see them on the on the hills and the, the deputy says, Oh, they look like a nice couple, and then fat guy, you know, waves at him or just no, he gives like a dirty look. And then it cuts to the, this horrible but wonderful don't go into the woods theme song during the ending credits but it's yeah. i i swear it's to the theme don't laugh when the hearse goes by you've heard that old song um the old nursery know. rhyme don't laugh when the hearse goes by you may be the next to die i'm sure you've heard that one no i i can't remember it okay well anyway it went from that stupid ass scene to that that song that i just couldn't help bust out laughing to and then the move, then the, the ending credits, and that's it. So, yeah, well, I, very I anticlimactic. The, but the nursery rhyme uh, song at the end reminds me of uh, the, the, what's great about this movie is it reminds me of great, better movies. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I don't watch Friday the Thirteenth and think of good movies because right. you're in that, even even if you think the Friday the Thirteenth are bad, you're invested in that universe. Mm -hmm. this, movie is a joke and it makes me think of better movies so um two better ones uh, really great slasher movies around the same time period is uh madman which that's what reminds me of the, the nursery rhyme okay i think that's a great one and even better just before dawn okay i've never heard of just before dawn I've heard of Madman. I haven't seen it, but I know it's. I've seen the cover. It's just some big fat hillbilly in overalls, and I think he's either holding like a knife or a cleaver. Yep. Okay. Well, it, it really, I'm not going to say anything, but in this, in Madman, they summon him, mm -hmm. uh, kind of like Candyman. These campers do. It's fantastic, and I think slightly better is just before dawn, which mm -hmm. is these uh, kids go up. It's kind of like Cabin in the Woods. They go up uh, Evil Dead. Um, to they don't have a cabin, but they're going they're going up in the woods, and some redneck really really another thing these all movies have in common the the bad guys really fat. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend that one to you. Okay, Madman. Just oh no, that one, but even more just before dawn. Just before dawn. Okay. And those two, um, if you want to see two amazing movies that that you you won't be able to watch those without thinking of this piece of shit. Great. But, you know, look, at the same time, I don't want to just hate on this, even though that's kind of what we've been doing. I, I, I honestly, I'm never, even though I'm never going to watch this movie again, I mm -hmm. have a little bit of respect for it. Well, that, well that's what I was going to say is, you know, we were shitting on it. Like, in the end, I mean, before we give final thoughts, you, is there anything else you wanted to say about the fat sheriff? Because I know you said you wanted to say a lot about him. Yeah, well, the, it, the, well the, again, this reminds me of another thing, okay? And... Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll, we'll end it, we'll tie it in with my wrap-up. I was I wanted to talk about the things that are good about this, that yeah. are noteworthy, that, that, that I have a shred of respect for it, even instead of just hating it, which, mm -hmm. I mean, come on. You have to, like, pick your battles. Who actually deserves hate and vitriol? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This is just another guy who likes horror movies, who yep. really wanted to make one, and it's, it's cute. Mm -hmm. uh, but about the sheriff, this reminds me of another insane um, plot hole, we'll call it, that mm -hmm. involved fat asshole sheriff. <laughs> this fat asshole in this movie is like not incompetent, but he's not he's not a good sheriff. He's just neutral. He doesn't do anything. He just doesn't give a shit is he, what it yeah, is. All he cares about is like sitting his ass at the 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 restaurant inside the hospital drink coffee mm -hmm. and, yeah and not flying around the airplane because he's not in that airplane <laughs> but you can't think i can't think of this movie sheriff which i do love him because he I, especially when they go on the hunt for the the victims after they show up the survivor mm -hmm. uh, he, he he uh he shows up and uh they get all the boys together he just like he just stops he's like no we can't go any further Mm -hmm. all the ones, everyone's exhausted and it cuts to the boys and they're all sitting around a fire they don't look they don't look tired at all he's right. just 400 pounds and there's no way he even got have, have you ever been hike let me just ask you this here's my big point have you ever been on a hike on a mountain before 
On a mountain, no, but I've been in like some on some nature trails. Okay, I've been on a hike on a mountain this size, and it's the mm-hmm. fun, hardest thing I've ever done. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought I was gonna die a few times, like my heart was gonna explode. I had people on the way up the mountain coming down, like trying to like help me. Mm-hmm. Like, just gotta keep going, man. You, it'll be worth it when you get up there. It's like the it's the hardest thing ever is is walk is doing a hike up a mountain. That guy, that sheriff, what they made it for fucking twenty minutes. Right. So it's completely unrealistic, and I I'm, I don't want to draw this out, but it reminds me of the Descent Two. Have you seen the Descent Two? Once I was very indifferent to it, especially because I loved the first one so much. Oh, I fucking hated the second one, but not indifferent. The first one's so great that the bar was set so high for a sequel, so I had to watch it. I was like, how are they going to follow that up? Which they didn't follow up. But mm-hmm. the sheriff in that movie is this giant fat asshole, and at the very beginning, the part two is just like um, Halloween 2, where it mm-hmm. starts right after the first one. Right. Uh, and so she goes and gets the sheriff, and the opening of the movie is the sheriff going, uh, they have like a, like this elevator thing that goes down into the caves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's this giant fat guy, and he he goes into spelunking <laughs> in these caves. And he's like my size, he wouldn't have made it five feet. All these girls are like super skinny and super fat. Uh-huh. You can't. My point is, you can't spelunk if you're a giant fat sheriff. Mm-hmm. And it was ridiculous that they even tried to make it look realistic. He would have yeah. got stuck so fast, and and and. He would have got stuck in one of those like things that you have to crawl through, and they would mm-hmm. all die. That's your end of the movie right there. They all die because this fat ass couldn't crawl through a hole. <laughs> Seriously, don't watch The Descent 2, but just put on the beginning if you ever see it like on streaming. It's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Like You're not going in that cave. Uh, I'm sorry I'm drawing this out so long. <laughs> No, that's okay. It just it sends up my fat guy red flags. Like a normal person who's watching mm-hmm. that be like, oh, okay. Yeah, he's kind of fat, but I guess this could work. No. Mm-hmm. Could. I don't know. Okay, okay. But wrap it up. Just like... Well, that's okay. Well, like 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 you like you would you had mentioned, um, I do even if I, I really can't stand a movie, I try to find some positives and I did find one. Um I liked the machete kill, the effects were good. Um, but overall my final thoughts on this movie it was it was very boring in parts. It was horribly made. It was stupid as hell. But you know what? This guy made a movie and I haven't. So Yeah. That's he amazing. has his he, he made a movie. He's got it on home media. I mean, it's not just some random video that you can find on YouTube. It is released on Blu-ray. It's more than I've done with my life, so I can't shit out of a whole bunch. You know what I mean? Will I ever watch this again? Absolutely not. I have no desire to watch it. Like, this isn't even really a movie that I think would be fun to watch with friends, other than if we're poking fun at the the shitty ADR. Um, I don't hate my I hate my friend Victoria for making us do this, but I'm not happy that she she made us do this type of thing. So, did it suck? Absolutely. Is it the worst horror movie ever made? I'm pretty sure it's not. I mean, that, that, I know there's Birdemic out there, which I've never seen, but I've seen enough clips of Birdemic to know that I'm sure that's 100% worse because you can tell I, there's no I, effort made into that one. Um, it's definitely not the worst movie I've ever seen. I'd rather watch this again than Dune. So, <laughs> Holy or shit. any or any David Lynch movie to begin with. So, no. Really? Wait. I, wait, do you just hate... All, have you seen all of them? You just hate them all, or everyone that you've seen, you've hated. I've I hate everyone that I've seen. I've told I've been I I hate Dune. Dune's the worst movie I've ever seen. I hate Mulholland Drive because it's too fucking confusing. I hate Lost Highway because it's too fucking confusing. But I have been told to give The Elephant Man and Blue Velvet a shot because they're not confusing. And and another one. I gave you another one. You did? Come on now. It's not confusing at all. It's made for Disney. It's rated G. Oh, shit. You said that in uh, last week's episode, didn't you? 
I don't know. I don't know. I probably already forgot because it was David Lynch, but hold on. Let's see here. It's okay. I mean, you don't have to look it up or anything. If, no, if... I actually got my notes from last week down. Uh, not let the right one. The invitation? No, no, I didn't bring it up. Did I? No, I don't think I brought it up last week. It was like the week before. Oh, well, shit. I don't last even week. remember. Last I don't even remember week. yesterday, so. Well, what was it? Okay, it's the straight story. I just hope I'm not too late. You've got two brothers that haven't spoken in 10 years. I want to make peace. I want to sit with him, look up at the stars, like we used to do so long ago. The brothers and brother. Nope. I'll write that down, but I didn't remember that at all. Okay, I'm pretty sure you might not have heard me because how can you forget? Here's the synopsis an old man's brother is dying. And he's really poor, so the only way to get across the state to see him is on his riding lawnmower. No, you did tell me about that, because I remember the riding lawnmower. And it's a true story, and it's amazing. Yeah, you did tell me that. It definitely wasn't last week, because I didn't have that written down when I was taking uh, notes for our Halloween stuff. I just want to make a point that I found some of the filmmaking stuff to be a little bit better than I'm not talking, I mean, it's obviously a bad movie, but I mm -hmm. accidentally did some cool stuff a few times. Yeah. And like, like we were saying, not even close to worst movie. I wouldn't, the funny no. thing about it is my opinion is kind of like what she did to us. Uh, this is not a movie to get drunk with your friends and laugh about. This is one to like put on someone. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Like, oh, you got to check this out. If you like slashers, like, oh, yeah, don't go to the woods. Just just to fuck with people, just to see if they'll mm -hmm. actually find the whole thing. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's like a troll. Yeah. So it does have a purpose. And, you know, like you were saying, we know we haven't made a movie. We're talking about it. We're doing a mm -hmm. podcast 40 years later. You, you know, and guess what? 40 years from now, that movie is going to be 80, 80 years old, and people are still going to be talking about it. Mm-hmm. And there'll be even fatter assholes on YouTube making videos talking about how to say Because 80 years from now, it's going to be like Wally, like super fat. <laughs> I wash myself with a rag on a stick. Don't go to what is this garbage. <laughs> you don't know nothing. Oh, God. Well, I'm surprised we were able to get that long of an episode out of Don't Go Into the Woods. Um, an hour. Yeah, we were worried, weren't we? And we didn't really have too much padding, I don't think. No, we just talked about it. I mean, I'm just, you know, just being honest. That's all you can all right. do. Um, you can find this this show on Twitter at two, the number two, underscore beard, underscore losers. And honestly, that would probably be the easiest way to get a hold of me. I'm the one that, that does all the tweets. But if there's anything important, I, I forward that to Frenzy. So any like praise, uh, requests, what have you, um, that would be the easiest way to find us. Once again, thank you for watching, listening, however. Um, and uh, don't go into the woods alone. Or watch this movie alone. Or with someone. Good night. I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> if heaven and hell decide that they both are satisfied, Illuminate the nose on their vacancy signs If there's no one beside you when your soul embarks Then I'll follow you into the dark